decided on the tree going here. Last year we had it here, but it looks a bit shoved there now. So I think we're going with this. Morning, sweet humans. Um, welcome to a new vlog. As you can see, I put together the Christmas tree. I decided to put it on a stool this year to kind of elevate it a little bit, to make it feel like a bigger tree, even though it's a small tree. And some, you know, minimal decorations that still give festive vibes, but are still sophisticated. Not that kitsch Christmas isn't amazing. I also upgraded a little bit the bedroom, which maybe I'll show you later. I'm gonna run now to a used bookstore that is kind of like not, it's pretty close to where I live because I'm looking for a secret Santa gift. And obviously I'm gonna give a book as a gift. So I'm gonna try, we're on a budget, like a certain amount of money for each gift. So I think the used bookstore is my best option. So I'll take you along with me. I hope you guys are getting into the holiday vibes if Christmas is something that you celebrate. And I also, something very exciting that happened to me today is that something kind of using the system, um, which is I used a friend's um, address in the States and signed up for an online library card so that I could sign up for the Libby app and it's amazing. I know I'm really behind, everyone knows about Libby, um, but for me, because access to a public library here is complicated, which it shouldn't be, but it is for me, I was able to just get some online books from the library and send them to my Kindle. Maybe I'll share with you my library picks and yeah, but let's let's go to the bookstore first. I love it so much. All right, hello, hello. It's nighttime and I'm sitting here with a glass of wine. Look at my beautiful Christmas tree, which you saw clips of earlier. I don't know if those were a disaster or not, but I really tried. They've got the bottle next to me. Yes, because do you think I'm just having one glass of wine? No, it's been that kind of day. Cheers, um, because you're watching this on after we have moved over to the other YouTube channel. It is the beginning of a new chapter. I'm feeling free, I'm feeling untethered. I don't even know if that's the right use of that word. I went to the used bookstore today looking for a gift, um, as I mentioned earlier, and I found a few things. I got two um, Margaret Dura 
I don't know how to say Margaret with a better accent in French, but I know last name is Dua. So, terrible cover, but The Lover, you might have seen this via Rebecca Eats Books. She did eat this one. I'm gonna try to be like Anna and read you the back with vigor. Saigon, 1930s. A poor French girl meets the elegant son of a wealthy Chinese family. Soon they are lovers locked into a private world of passion and intensity that defies all the conventions of their society. A sensational international bestseller and winner of France's coveted Prix Goncourt, the lover is disturbing, erotic, and masterly. This is an unforgettable portrayal of the incandescent relationship between the lovers and of the hate that slowly tears the girl's family apart. So, I have a friend that I've been paired with for Secret Santa, and I'm thinking that this is the right kind of vibe. It's skinny and small, it's good, good writing, and it's a little erotic. So I think that's gonna do it. Another um, book that I actually, by the same author, this one's called Destroy, she said, a novel. Love the cover, absolutely beautiful. Translated from the French by Barbara Bray. In this classic novel by the best-selling author of The Lover, erotic intrigues among a quartet of two women and two men mask a chillingly deceptive form of madness. Elizabeth Alione is convalescing in a hotel in rural France when she meets two men and another woman. Okay, this is going really well. Dalians, Dalians, among the four serves to obscure an underlying violence, which when the curtain of civilization is drawn aside, reveals in her fellow guests a very contemporary, perhaps even new form of insanity. Like many of Dura's other novels, Destroy, she said, owes much to cinema. There are reoccurring moods and motifs from Dura's repertory, eroticism, lassitude, stifled desire, a beautiful woman, a mysterious forest, a desolate provincial hotel. You guys, this sounds fucking great. Then I got this one, which I also thought is a possible gift for her. This is Evening in Paradise by Lucia Berlin. I'm assuming it's Lucia. Berlin earned comparisons to Raymond Carver, Grace Paley, Alice Munro, and Anton Chekhov. Evening in Paradise is a careful selection from Berlin's remaining stories, 22 gems that showcase the gritty glamour that made readers fall in love with her writing. From Texas to Chile, Mexico to New York City, mm. Berlin finds beauty in the darkest places and darkness in the seemingly pristine. So it says she has come to be recognized as one of the most important writers in 20th century American short fiction. So that sounds great. I've seen this book around a lot um, and I thought it was just time to get it. Then this last one is truly really for me. I just love the cover of that. Fran Leibowitz Reader brings together in one volume with a new preface two bestsellers, Metropolitan Life and Social Studies by an important humorist in the classic tradition who is the natural successor to Dorothy Parker. In elegant, finely honed prose, Leibowitz limbs the vicissitudes of contemporary urban life. It's fads, trends, crazes, morals, and fashions. By turns, ironic, facetious, deadpan, sarcastic, wry, wisecracking, and waggish. She is always wickedly entertaining. There's also a blurb from Newsweek that says, right on the mark. Among the things she hates this time, baggage claim areas, high tech, aftershave lotion, adults who roller skate, children who speak French, or anyone who is unduly tan. I think that that is just gonna be absolutely great. So that's really exciting. The other really exciting thing that happened today was the Libby app. So I wanted to share with you the library picks that I have checked out virtually. First was The Transmigration of Bodies by Yuri Herrera. We know that I loved Signs Preceding the End of the World. We know my sister Ignacia loves Yuri Herrera's work, so I have to read the, ne the next one. Then I got Intimations by Zadie Smith. It's a short one. I saw it in a local bookstore for a ridiculously overpriced price. And I said, absolutely not. So this is much better. I can read it for free. The next one I checked out is um, Dear Senthurin, A Black Spirit Memoir by Akweke Amezi. Yes, yes, and yes. As I mentioned after I read 
fresh water that um, Akweke Mezi is one of the most exciting voices that I read and discovered this year. So I really can't wait to read their memoir, especially read a memoir of a non-binary person through a really specific cultural lens, so I can't wait for that. Then it was available, so I checked out Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. And the last one that I checked out, and the one that I'm gonna start first, as soon as I um, finish filming this right now, is Assembly by Natasha Brown. I'm doing this like I show you the cover, but it's so small. Assembly was a hit this year. Um, many people said it was amazing. Some people said it was just okay. So I'm wondering where I'm gonna fall on the spectrum, but it's gonna be a buddy read with, as I mentioned, her Ignacia from Literary Iggy. I'm sure you all watch her and you love her. So that's all I have to say for now. Get yourself a glass of wine or tea or water. Open your book and let's read for the rest of the evening. I, on the one hand, do not look presentable, but this one does. Very cute. Cutie. We are off to work, and we are prepared for a downpour. It's coming our way. Okay, okay. We're doing earrings and sweatpants because let's chat about what's going on. I've been watching all my fave booktubers this morning. All the bays, all the gift guides, all of the vlogs. It's enjoying. I wanted to show you something. Look at this stunning mug that my friend, who I mention a lot, her name is Mai. I need to get her on the channel doing some kind of video. She also has really good reading taste. Anyway, as a Christmas gift, she made this in the ceramic studio that she goes to. It's so beautiful. It's got these like ridges and this beautiful kind of indigo color inside. Needed to share that because it's so stunning and I had my coffee in it this morning. Let me turn on the Christmas tree. And I wanted to chat a little bit about Assembly by Natasha Brown. Right after I film this clip, I'm gonna go finish the last 35 pages of this and come back and talk to you. But I just wanted to tell you that I'm, wow, really enjoying it. So it's following, <clears throat> let's have a little bit of a chest cold. Um, fun. We're following our main character who is a black British woman working in finance and her boyfriend is a white man, straight obviously, and um, works in politics and comes from old money. So this is a little short, short novel, a tiny, um, if you're into tiny books that's dissecting this woman's experience as a black woman in generally in the world and society but also specifically in the workplace and in the context of 
a family event of her white partner. It's amazing. I keep highlighting um, on my Kindle and sharing it on Instagram. So if you want to follow that, you can click the link downstairs. It's sharp, it's cutting, it's clever. It slaps, it really slaps. So um, I'll get back to you in a minute about that. But I just wanted to film this and the camera's gonna die. So charge the battery in the meantime. Okay, so I'm not quite done yet. I have like 10 pages left. Guys, this book is incredible. As Jalen would say, this book slaps. This book truly, truly slaps. Sort of a buddy read with Iggy, um, my bae. Of course, as with anyone that does a buddy read with me, they finish it first and then I'm just like, I'm always late. I'm texting her now, like, I'm reading passages of this book out loud as if it's a speech that needs to be given to the people of the world that need to fucking get this in their brain. In the context of racism and Specifically, I think this book is like magnifying microaggression. We're dissecting this narrator's experience with constant microaggression from all different directions for her race and for her sex. I also love that she weaving some sort of story, like we are following this character's like um, situations and like leading up to this event of like going to her partner's family's like mansion for this big party. So we're following like a sort of storyline, but then she's just straight up unpacking Britain's colonial racist history and sparing you no details. She takes no bullshit in this book. I'm loving her voice, I'm like, yes, she's just amazing. I'm gonna finish and then we're just gonna do quick fire um, quotes because I feel like this book just really speaks for itself and so I'm gonna read you a few things, but I'm gonna finish it first. I finished it, oh my God. Wow, I love this book so much. Read it, read it, read it, read it, read it, read it. It's only available in hardback and it's so small and so expensive that I know myself and people that wrote me on Instagram after posting about it was like, I can't justify the price. Um, so I would say try to, to get a library copy, um, either through the Libby app like I did or through your local library. If you can get your hands on it, read it. Capitalism. Privilege the house down boots. Main character is a thinky woman that is just trudging through life because of all the shit that's thrown at her all the time for just being the person she is, born the way she is. You know, reading her feelings is so confronting for me because, you know, just of my own privilege. Like it's shocking to you to read it because of your own privilege, because you don't live the life that she lives, you know? You know, I can talk about being an outwardly queer person in the world, so we can have a conversation about that. But yes, I acknowledge that I'm a white person um, reading this. It's just so strong. Such a good book. This is a quote that has to do kind of with her in the context of this rich, privileged, white family of her idiot boyfriend, okay? I must play this part with a veneer of new millennial money coolness, serving up savage witticisms alongside the hors d'oeuvres. It's a fictionalization of who I am, but my engagement transforms the fiction, fiction. My engagement transforms the fiction into truth. My thoughts, my ideas, even my identity can only exist as a response to the party goers, words and actions articulated along the perimeter of their form reinforcing both their selfhood and its centrality to mine. How else can they be certain of who they are and what they aren't? Delineation requires a sharp black outline. This one's short. How do we examine the legacy of colonization when the basic facts of its constructions are disputed in the minds of its beneficiaries? 
she's talking about Britain, this with breathtaking ease, the facts of Britain's non-war 20th century history have been unrooted, dug out from the country's collective memory. How can we engage, discuss, even think through a post-colonial lens when there's no shared base of knowledge? Be the best, work harder, work smarter, exceed every expectation, but also be invisible, imperceptible, don't make anyone uncomfortable, don't inconvenience, exist in the negative only, the space around, do not insert yourself into the main narrative, go unnoticed, become the air, open your eyes. You guys, it's good, that's some really good shit. Five Stars, Assembly by Natasha Brown, definitely a book to reread, um, and reread and reread and read again. Anything she touches, I wanna read. In the spirit of Don't Blow Your Cover by CJ from CJ Reads, when she talks about book covers, whether they work or don't work, whether they're hot or not, because I just watched Anna's new vlog, which I will link below. She does sort of an homage to CJ because Lit Hub just released the 101 best book covers or something. So I thought before we end this vlog, I would just pick a few to talk about. The 101 best book covers of 2021 as chosen by our favorite book cover designers. Let's talk about ones that I really like. Mona, love this cover. I'm gonna probably echo a lot of things that Anna likes because I feel like we have similar tastes. Pessoa, I'm also Liking This Cover by Richard Zenith. Antonio, a novel by Beatrice Brocker, Brocher. Beautiful, like it, simple, love the font. Civilizations by Laurent Binet. I'm assuming Binet sounds French. This is beautiful also, love the black and red. Water Statues by Fleur Yegi. A novel gives me bluettes by Maggie Nelson vibes. I like something about this. I like something about this, yeah. You can say it's kind of giving you nothing, but Nectarine by Chad Campbell. I like something about this. It's aesthetic. It would look pretty in my house. I would like to have it on this um, dark wood dresser that uh, you're propped up on. Three novels by Yuri Herrera. Translated by Lisa Dillman. Beautiful, we love. The Art of Wearing a Trench Coat. Um, I do like this cover. There are some bad ones on here, you guys. How did they make it on the one oh, top 101? Okay, well, I scrolled to the bottom, so I guess those are a few that I think are nice. Okay, that's it, I think. Um, I think I've decided also on which books that I got from the used bookstore that I'm gonna give as a Secret Santa gift. Um, so the ones that I'm not giving her, um, so I'm, is, are these. <laughs> the Lover by Margaret Dura. Um, maybe I'll read that one, also a tiny, or I'll dip into the Fran reader, or because I'll always have these, and the ones that I checked out from the library are, like, obviously with a time limit. I don't know. All of them sound good. Like, I really want to read the Quake Amezi's memoir. All exciting choices, I'm not sure. But I will, of course, let you know whatever I do choose. I'm sort of working on a few exciting kind of branch projects from this channel, so I'll let you know about those when they happen. I, I would say that you can follow me on Instagram and you'll probably hear more about it there. Did you hear that? Love you dear people. And moving to a new YouTube channel just gave me so much like inspiration and just lit something nice for me. <laughs> Like, what words am I using? Nothing sophisticated, that's for sure. I'm feeling like with less baggage, just more like going for it. Okay, love you. See you in the next one. Bye. Big hugs.